All right. Um, great, great speeches today. And this is the beauty about the uh, A4M. Like Dr. Reed mentioned, there's too many ways to skin a cat, and there's too many ways to, a lot of things to learn here. And then you take your own style and, and you do whatever you like to do. Today, we're going to talk about a uh, different subject, which is um, probably a little bit neglected. When we talk about obesity, we talk about, you know, we put a lot of emphasis on uh, maybe women or men, I mean uh, children, even the national media, and Mrs. Obama is now taking this issue also. But men gets a little bit neglected in the process. So today we're going to talk a little bit about men and obesity and the vicious cycle of uh, low testosterone and obesity. How do I um, just... Uh, Alrighty. So obesity. Um, obesity is not a uh, something new. The epidemic of obesity is new, but obesity has been uh, there for a long, long time. Um, and if you look at the history, you will see that I will mention two examples today about uh, how far obesity go back. Um, it actually goes back to about 25,000 to 30,000 BC uh, when a, um, an archeologist in Austria uh, found, in uh, 1908, uh, found this little statue that is 11.1 centimeter in length, um, which dates back to 25, 30,000 years ago. And um, they call it the Venus of Willendorf. And if you look at the statue, uh, you will see that this is a statue of a woman with large breasts, large stomach hanging, big thighs. Um, and there is a lot of controversy whether this is actually was a statue of the typical woman at the time, or this is a symbol of what was happening at that time. So uh, because it, it is a long time ago, there's a lot of controversy about that. Um, even in mummies in Egypt, they have found some uh, reports. This is a mummy of Hatshepsut, which is um, one of the uh, pharaohs. And they looked at her mummies and did an x-ray of her. And if you look at her teeth, you can see there's a lot of bone loss, a lot of decay, and a lot of cavities there, which implies that maybe this woman was obese, has diabetes, which you see people with diabetes have bone loss and cavities, um, which um, they think that she was also obese. So why is it that we, always when we see a, a mummy or you see a, a Greek statue or Italian or something, it's all of muscular men, beautiful women, um, and, and all these beautiful pictures that we see. It's the same kind of concept if you pick up a magazine now, a uh, Sports Illustrated or um, Men's Health or something like that, you will see on the, or Playboy, you will see a uh, beautiful figure on the front, and the same thing if you flip the pages. Um, one may think if you pick up a magazine like that, that everybody in America is um, very slim and, and they look beautiful like that, but that's not the case. So in the past, they, they did statues of very fit people, um, and their way of thinking of how beautif beautiful a body should be. Well, what's happened in the new world? Well, in the US, there is um, a recent study, actually it was released in January of 2010, that showed some alarming numbers. More than two thirds of the US adults are overweight or obese. One third are considered uh, obese. And 10% of our children and adolescents are overweight or obese. In one study, they analyzed the prevalence of obesity 
uh, and overweight among 5,555 adults, men and women. Uh, overweight was considered a BMI of 25 to 29.9. And I'll, I'll, I don't know, in the last two lectures, I'm not sure if they went through the classification of uh, what obesity is, but we, would, we, are, we consider that anything below 25 is normal. 25 to 29.9 is considered um, overweight, and then 30 to 35 is considered obese. 35 to 40 is considered uh, overly obese, and then over 40 is considered morbidly obese. Um, overall prevalence of obesity was 33.8% with more women than men. And then combined obesity and overweight, uh, overall prevalence was 68% with more women, more men than women. In 2007 and 2008, the overall prevalence of obesity was 33.8% with more women than men. 35.5 versus 32.2 considered obese. Combining obesity and overweight, the overall prevalence was 68% this time, with more men than women, 72.3 versus 64.1%, considered overweight or obese. The prevalence of obesity varied by age group and by racial ethnic groups. So incidence of male obesity rose from 11.7 to 17.9 from 1991 to 1998. The prevalence of obesity in males reported to be approximately now about 30.6%. And this is, I find, this is very fascinating. This is the rate of obesity in different um, areas in the world. If you look at the U.S. as the most obese nation in the world with 31% obesity. And um, interestingly, I thought, because Mexico is close to the USA, it makes sense that the obesity rate there was high as well. However, you don't see the same thing with, for example, the United Kingdom and France. If you look at the United Kingdom and France, they're next to each other, but the United Kingdom is 23% and France is only 9%, which is kind of interesting. So during the past 20 years, there have been a dramatic increase in obesity in the U.S. In 1985, only a few states were participated in the uh, CDC behavior uh, risk factor surveillance system and providing obesity data. In 1991, four states had obesity prevalence rates 15 to 19 percent, and no states had rates above 20 percent. In 2004, however, Seven states had obesity prevalence rated uh, 15 to 19 percent, 33 percent had rates 20 to 24 percent, and nine states had rated more than 25 percent. 